Hey guys, Victoria Paxton here. Okay, so today I am doing the one, the only, Freddie Mercury of Queen. I would have a hard time believing that there's anybody out there that doesn't like him and his music. Um, I mean, he was just so iconic, you know? So I'm really excited to be doing this one. He's another musician that I absolutely love and admire so much. And so, yeah, so let's get started. Okay, so Farrick Balsara was born on September 5th of 1946, also known as Freddie Mercury. Freddie attended English-style boarding schools from the age of eight in India. He returned to Zanzibar after secondary school in 1964. Okay, so his family fled the Zanzibar Revolution, moving to Middlesex, England. Okay, so having studied and written music for years, he formed a band in 1970. Okay, along with guitarist Brian May and drummer Roger Taylor. Freddie wrote major hits for Queen. I don't think I need to go over the list. I mean, he was the brains behind the majority of the music, so he was amazing. So he was known, you know, because he had such a charismatic, upbeat stage presence. I mean, he was, he was one in a million. He was. Um, it, he also had a solo career. He was uh, a producer, and he also wrote music for other bands. So that aspect of it, writing music for other bands, I don't think I knew that. I mean, it doesn't surprise me because he was, a, you know, he was a genius and he was brilliant when it came to music. But that's pretty cool to learn that. Okay, so the day before Freddie died, there had been for years, even in the 80s, the end of the 80s, there had been articles written that it was suspected that Freddie Mercury had AIDS. Um, he had shot it down every time, every time it was, you know, published in the news, he shot it down and said, no, no, no. Well, the day before he died, he finally came out and said that, yes, he had full-blown AIDS. On November 24th of 1991, Freddie Mercury passed away. Um, as a result of complications due to AIDS. I believe it was more specifically like pneumonia. I think he had pneumonia in both lungs is what actually killed him. He was 45 years old. He was so young. He was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2001, the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2003, and the UK Music Hall of Fame in 2004. Wow. In 1990, Mercury and their band was awarded the Brit Award for Outstanding Contribution to British Music and one year Oh, to British music. And one year after Freddie's death, he was awarded it individually. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, so I was able to connect with Freddie. He came through, and I was immediately blown away with how shy and reserved he was. He was just very laid back, shy. <laughs> kind of blew me away. He looked amazing. He had... The thick hair that he had back when he was like in his 20s, he had the longer hair. He looked really good. He looked really good. I introduced myself and he said that he goes by Farrick now. So that's his given name. So I said, oh, I apologize, you know. Okay, so I asked him to talk to me a little bit about where he is and what it's like. And it was interesting because he said... It's loud sometimes, like when you're at a concert, but it's quiet when you need it to be. So I was like, okay. <laughs> like, wow, okay, okay. He went on to say everybody's happy and content and polite. Um, he said there's no strife there whatsoever. And yeah, wish it were like that here, right? Sounds really good. Okay, so this part kind of caught me off guard. He said... It's sad to know that someone can take someone else's life based on the color of their skin. Um, yeah, that kind of blew me away, given what's going on with George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery. Um, was it Brianna Davis? Okay, so he went on to explain that where he is, the color of your skin, your gender, your sexual orientation, your personality, your wit, None of that is taken, is taken out of context. None of it's held against you, okay? So none of that matters. You're accepted 
for who you are there is what he said and that was kind of cool to hear <laughs> so it was interesting because he started talking about the rioting that's going on because of george floyd's death and he said it just saddens me so much to know that that's still going on because where he is people are loved and accepted they're loved and accepted for their differences whereas here on earth unfortunately that doesn't always apply i mean and he was talking and he seemed you know like he seemed to be like letting his guard down and relaxing so i was just letting him talk you know i just wanted him to talk so he said he hopes that there will come a day where this world will stop killing basically um he said senseless murders it's horrible there's too many senseless murders and he would hope that someday that would end but he didn't sound very convincing that he was hoping that would end i mean because come on i don't know if that is gonna end you know okay so one thing that was really interesting he brought up lgbtq and he said one of the biggest regrets that he has is that he never spoke about his sexuality um, he went on to say that, you know, his parents ascribed to Zoastrian, I believe it is, uh, the faith that they are. And he said, you know, they're old school. And he said, you know, he had fallen in love with Mary and was totally head over heels in love with her and wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. But then he started noticing that he wasn't attracted to her anymore. He was attracted to men. And he knew that his parents would be upset if they knew that. Um, so he said, you know, he kind of kept his mouth shut about his sexual orientation, but he said, you know, it was all over the newspapers. It was all in the magazines about, you know, him going out with this person and that person. And he said, you know, that hurt his parents, like that hurt his parents. Um, and he said, he always, when people would say, Oh, you're gay or, Oh, you're bisexual. He would always say, no, no, I'm not, you know, and he said that's one thing that he regrets because he said he could have stood up and been more outspoken about, you know, people's rights, LGBTQ, you know, their rights. And he said that was one thing that he really regretted. You could tell it upset him. You know, you could tell. Um, and he said, he did say, you know, there was a lot of time when he was just, confused it's like he didn't understand what was going on he didn't understand why it was that all of a sudden he was attracted to boys when he had always been attracted to mary so he said he just didn't understand that part of himself i guess so i said to him okay well if we're on that subject um when you were on earth were you gay or bisexual and he kind of smiled and said yes and yes yes to both <laughs> so i thought that was kind of cute um okay he went on to say that another part of his sexual um orientation was he never felt like he should have to put a label on himself and he said that's kind of how everything started was he didn't feel like he should have a label. You know, am I gay? Am I bisexual? Am I straight? Am I this? Am I that? And he said that grew over time, you know, into he was worried about his parents and, you know, but he said it did start off that he didn't want to be labeled. He said he was head over heels in love with Mary. Um, she was the love of his life until one day he wasn't attracted to her anymore and he was attracted to boys. And he said, you know, so am I gay? Am I bisexual? I don't know what I am. I don't know what I was on earth. I don't know what I was then. You know, I fell in love with people for people. I didn't fall in love with them based on their gender. So I, that was kind of cool too, you know? That's like, that's how like pansexual people feel, right? I think that's right. I think it's that. Uh, yeah, so he was talking about all this with me and he got kind of quiet and he said, I don't know why people put so much into silly things like that. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, it just, why does it matter? Why does it have to matter? You know, you could tell it was something he's like thought a lot about, right? He went on to say, why is it anyone's business who I choose to love? He's like, that's my personal business. That's not anybody else's business. 
And I said, oh, yep, I agree with you 100%. I totally agree with you. So he went on to talk about Mary, and he looks in on her and how happy she seems to be now, and he's so glad that she's happy, you know. And then he talks about Jim Hutton, the man that he was with at the end of his life. He'd been with him for quite a few years. He talks about he sees him all the time. Uh, so, yeah, he's, I said, oh, so he's passed, and he said, yeah, he passed away. But he's like, yeah, I see him all the time, you know. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. He did say, which I, when he started off talking about this, I was like, what the heck is he about to say? He did say, well, I'm so happy that Mary's happy. <laughs> I'm like, what? And he said, I'll just be so happy when I can see her again face to face and be around her again. So, you know, he said she truly was the one true love of his life, you know, and he stands by that even in death. So that was pretty cool. Okay, so this is where... I mean, this just blew me away. Um, and I'm going to have to read this straight from my paper because I want to get his words right. He got quiet again and he said he wished the people that are still on the earth that are suffering, whether they're suffering from AIDS, cancer, addiction, or hate, whether it's hate for a person's skin color, sexual orientation, or just a general hate, that they could see what it's like where he is. Um, if they could see and feel the peace Maybe the ones full of hate would feel peace. And maybe the sick would know that where they're going, it's peaceful and loving. You'll never be sick again. And it brought tears to my eyes. It, I was overcome with grief, happiness. Um, it was just, that was so deep, you know. That was so deep coming from him. I was just like, wow. I mean, he just completely, completely blew me away on so many levels. You know, it just, yeah. So I asked him if he would talk to me about what he does each day. And let me get this right. He said, I live, I talk, I sing, and most importantly, I love. Wow. <laughs> that blew me away again, too. He said when he was alive, he loved and adored his fans. And he said he loved to perform, and that hasn't changed even in death. So I bid fair Rick ado and that was the end of it um but i will tell you <laughs> i will tell you um, i had always heard that you know he was just such an amazing guy with such a big heart and he was this and he was that you know and i spent quite a few years working at a venue um where i met many 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 artists and to this day i have long-lasting friendships with many artists and the one thing I can tell you is a lot of times when people say, oh, they're so nice and they're so this and they're so that, and then you see them backstage and you get to meet them and you spend time with them and you're like, wow, and that wasn't true. But you know, I believe with him, I mean, he is what he is. He's very real, he's very upfront, he's very open and that's just how it is, you know? So I was really, really impressed with him. I mean, I can't tell you how impressed I was with him. Like, this was a good reading. <laughs> So, okay, guys, be cool, be kind, be safe, stay healthy, wash your hands, wear your face mask, and you know what? Don't go out if you don't have to. I mean, this pandemic is still going on. It's scary. My town is still in phase one. Like, I need my hair dyed, okay? I'm completely out of dye, so I can't do it myself. The store that I buy my dye from isn't open, and they're first world problems, right? You know, I'll get through it, even if my gray is showing through, you know. But, yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> All right, guys, that about does it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye.